Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. In this video, I want to show you how the nine different settings for focus on the Ubrico GR3, they work. But before we get started, I just want to show you here the firmware, because if you have 1.0, then you might want to upgrade, because 1.1, as I have here, is uh, the word on the street is it's much better than 1.0. My camera, my version was shipped with the 1.1, so I haven't tried 1.0, but uh, that is my understanding. So before we get started, you may want to upgrade to, to 1.1 to get the best focus system available from uh, Ricoh. Another thing I want to mention is, you can see up here to the top left here, I have a little flower. And that corresponds to that flower you see over there. And the issue, or the thing is that this camera can focus very close. It has a macro function. And you can see right now it doesn't focus on anything because it's, it cannot focus to infinity when the macro focus is engaged. When it is engaged, you see that little symbol, right? And uh, in the beginning, when I was shooting this camera, I was very frustrated because why, why, won't it, why won't it focus to infinity? I can't get it to focus. And the issue was that I, of course, had the macro function engaged. So be sure that uh, when you try to focus to infinity, that little symbol is out of the way. And the way you do that is by pressing the macro symbol over here. Boom. And then it's gone. And you can just press and it will focus as uh, you expect it to. So if you center press the button you have here top right in the camera, you can see you get into a little menu system. And here you can set the, the image control, you can set the focus, you can set the metering, the file format, and the strength of the LCD. But here I want to talk about the focus system. So that's number two from the left. And in here you have nine options. And I start out with the first one, that's the auto one. And here you have absolutely no control. You can see the camera just selects whatever it thinks it wants to focus on. And uh, it varies a little bit subject to the exact conditions. You can see here it, it changes sometimes as it sees fit. So the camera will typically select what is the closest to you. And otherwise it's just, you know, point and shoot. You can always override the camera. Say now here I have the mad cow in the foreground here. So if I want to focus on the little Barcelona mouse out there, I can just ask the camera to focus on that. And then boom, it focuses out there. If I want to see how the camera is doing, I can press long, press and long hold the display button down here. If I do like that, and you can see I can go in and then I can see it hasn't focused on the cow, obviously, but it has focused on the little mouse there in the distance. If you press the display button once again, just Briefly, it would jump out of that mode. So long hold to jump in and just press to jump out again. So the next option here in the menu is the same as the first one, but it focuses on the center. So it's also area autofocus, but with focus on center. And that means if you have something in the, in the edges of the frame that you don't want it to focus on, I think this could be useful. So for portrait, I think this would be a great option. Next up is select autofocus. And that's why you select the autofocus point. And you can see here now, I can, I can both tap and ask it to focus on that, that particular area. If you want to control this with the control wheel, you can press the center, the OK button. And you can see down here, there is a little symbol that now emerges. And then you can move the cursor around like that. And that works fine. Just remember to have that symbol uh, present, otherwise, uh, you get into all of the functions over here, which is typically not what you're, <laughs> what you're trying to do when, when you just want to move the, the little thing around. But here you can also just press on the screen and it will focus wherever you have selected like that. The next option is a bit the same. It's just a smaller area. So it's called pinpoint and uh, that's useful if you have something, you know, now I did it, you can see I forgot to press uh, the center of the frame, so I got the little symbol. See, now I can move it around. And uh, yeah, it works really well if there's a very, very small thing you want to focus on, maybe something in the foreground that that you don't want it to focus on, then pinpoint can really be useful. Next up is the tracking autofocus, and that's one of my favorites. So if you have selected, say, the, the cow here, and you can see how it is able to keep track of the focus point, and it works really well as long as the subject does not move further away or closer to the camera. If you need that to be the case, then I would suggest to go for autofocus continuous. That's this one here. And you can see how I'm struggling a bit to demonstrate it because the subject is a bit small, but in real life it works really well. 
I wish I could say the same thing about the next option here, which is manual focus. You can see here now I am in manual focus. It says so on the top here, MF. And uh, if you press the little flower, once again, you can see it gets a little arrow there next to the distance meter. And you can see now I can turn it and, and move the focal plane back and forth. And I can also go into macro mode if I want to. This to me is not very smart because I have to turn this wheel so many times. Um, yeah, I don't use it much. The only thing I will say though is that is smart. That is, you can see as I have pressed the shutter, I get a little green bar there in the, in the distance meter to the left. And that tells me the depth of field. And that is brilliant. I really like that. But uh, I would prefer if there had been a focus ring on the front of the camera so I wouldn't have to sit here and remember to push that button and then turn that wheel and turn that wheel. Yeah, I don't use it for that reason, but uh, now you know it's there. So the next option is the snap focus. And here you can ask the camera to focus on a predefined distance. And you can see here top right, I have it set to one meter. And if I want to change that, I can press the flower there and then I can turn the front command wheel and you can see the options as I scroll through that. I believe it's infinity, five meters, and then the close distance options here down to one meter. So that's it. So when you hit the shutter without pausing in the middle, so to speak, just hit it all the way through and in a fast way, then it will focus to the predefined distance. And that is great. And the camera will work this way also uh, if you're one of the other modes, if you've just hit the shutter in a fast way, then uh, it, will, it will use this option. So I think this is perhaps most useful if uh, you don't like to hit the shutter in a snappy way, or if you want to configure uh, this option here, then you can do it here. The final option is infinity. And uh, that of course means the camera will focus to infinity. The thing I really like about this implementation is you have this a little bar here where you can see again the the depth of field scale but as i increase you can see here or close down the aperture you can see that the depth of field scale shows me i have more and more depth of field so that's a brilliant little detail i think and i think it's making the best use of the the depth of field here the way they have implemented the focus to infinity so i use this a lot for landscape and uh, maybe that could also be an option for you Finally, I want to show you here the customized settings. If you go into that menu and find the one called LCD touch operation, you can see you can turn that on and off, of course, but you can also control how much it does, the camera does when it's working and you, you touch the rear LCD. Right now I have it set so that it just selects the autofocus point, but you can also ask it to focus at the same time and shoot at the same time or even full press snap and you can turn it off. So this is really useful if you want the camera to do more than just focus when you when you charge the, the LCD. Finally, I wanna show you the focus settings here. You have many of the same options as I've shown you in, in the other menu, uh, but yeah, you can see here they are very much, you can recognize these as we've been through them, right? But there's one thing here that's different and that is here you can control the way the face and eye detection works, we can turn it off and on, and you can have it only active in, in auto area autofocus. And I also want to mention the focus peaking highlights. Uh, I'm not so happy about this implementation, but for manual focus, it can be useful. So you can see here right now, I had it off. You can have it to highlight the edges and you can have it to extract the edges. Let me just show you what that looks like. Uh, looks something like this. You can see here you get it's also like a little shade that shows you uh, the outline of what is being focused on. I would prefer peaking highlights implemented as colors, but maybe that's just me. Uh, I don't use this for that reason because I really miss the colors, so I have that off. And I would prefer to use the zoom function when I focus manually. Okay, that's it from me. As always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.